and he just walks off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we're all saying, taking the snowmobiles. Go, you know. and, and he doesn't want to take he's it. Walking. He's walking. He's, he'll walk instead of... It he's reminded a, me of he's, that... He's, um, a, he's a walker. <laughs> That was a good one. That's a good pun. That was pretty good. What's up? Welcome back to the State of the Ark podcast. My name is Mike. My name's Kason. We left off after leaving Guado Salam. We left off after to... leaving. I love that. No, we left off after leaving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guado Salam, <laughs> and we're now in the Thunder Plains. Yes. Uh, the Thunder Plains are awesome. It just as like a cool fantasy location. Why did I call it Lightning Field? I don't know. Is that how it's? Is no, it, it I says well, in Japanese? actually now that you say Thunderplane, that's I think that was it. But for some reason, I wrote down <laughs> Lightning Field. <laughs> I love it though. This is a super cool place. It's an awesome <laughs> fantasy location. It's, yes. it's a, a constant storm. Yes. where it was very treacherous to pass for years and years and years. Yeah, um, Machen actually tells you a little bit about this. Uh, how uh, an owl bed actually a man named Bilgen built these giant lightning rods yes. so that people would be able I, to cross the field safely. I love safely. that story. That's the kind of, and, and at the very last one, he finished the very last one and then he gets hit by lightning yeah, and, and dies. dies. Right? And it's like, oh my gosh, that's the perfect story. <laughs> I know. That's such a good story. And he also mentions how- It's like the perfect legend. Bilgin is not mentioned in any of the history books because he was Albed. So oh, this, this of course. Albed- Because he made Machina. Yeah, yeah, performed this incredible service that allows yes. people to pass through these planes <laughs> and nobody wants to talk about who oh, actually great. did this or give him any credit because wow. he was Albed. Crazy. Anyway, nice little touch there, uh, the story that Machen tells you. I wonder if there's an explanation for why there's so much lightning in this place. I don't know. Because I have a theory <clears throat> that in between Guado Salam and the uh, Makalania, the forest there, where all the fireflies are. These are two firefly rich locations. And in between them is this void, this desert. Mm. And we know that electricity, the electricity that yeah, they use in true. the world is generated by fireflies. Right. And so I kind of- That's actually a really good point. I'm wondering if there's like a friction between these two firefly locations and then it comes down as electricity in between them, right? So it says here, the Thunder Plains, also known as the Gandalf Thunder Plains. Gandalf was one of the summoners who defeated Sin in the past. Oh, okay. Um, just like, uh, what's his name from the Kilika Temple? I can't remember his name, the Blitzball player. Yeah. Uh, Gandalf Thunder Plains is an open, barren landscape connecting Guadalajara to Makalania Woods. Uh, it is constantly bombarded by rain and lightning bolts. Long ago, crossing the plains was dangerous due to the never-ending storm until an owlbed named Bilgen set up several towering lightning rods. Ironically, he was in the process of setting up the final tower when he was struck by lightning and killed. Uh, and FF10's planes are treacherous, but the towers draw most of the lightning away. The planes are named after the high summoner Gandalf, who removed the threat of cactuars from the Jose continent yeah, yeah, by driving them into the Thunder Plains and sealing them in the cactuar stones. Where they just got. Yeah, yeah I don't know if it says anything about fireflies. Let's see. The travel agency, astrophobia. Yeah, this isn't saying anything about that. I like that theory though, that because um, because that is yeah, true. Yeah, it's like a yeah. That the, the, those are the two firefly richest places. Yeah, right? in, in between them, because that was like a lot of the imagery from the uh, Jose Temple, right? Yeah, like exactly. The, the electric energy, the lightning, stuff. the electricity, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> as you're crossing, yeah, Riku just Riku freaks, freaks out. out. This is a really interesting. Scene, it's it's I, I get it, like what they're trying to do. The horror, wise. the horror movie war one or the beginning. At yeah, the beginning. like the, yeah, the, the top the down. angle from top yes. down where she just like crumps over like a freaking monster <laughs> from a horror film and, and the like camera, crawls the camera across goes the ground like right up her butt and as then, she, <laughs> and then <laughs> grabs she his leg. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird scene. <laughs> a lot of this doesn't hit very well. I think it's yeah. it's. I don't know. Um, but however, except for the scene where they're walking away from her and she keeps complaining. Yes. And Come then they back, walk further. Oh, your moms would be disappointed then, in yeah. you. <laughs> and then they walk further. You're so yeah. mean. And then they all come back yeah. like, you, you're worse. Oh, what does Oren say? She's worse than the lightning. Yeah. <laughs> we'll stop here tonight. Yeah. That scene I liked. That yeah. was, I laughed out loud. That yeah. was a funny moment. Yeah. But 
the other parts are, I, you just, I don't know. I think it, it, it's better knowing her past, knowing her history, knowing why she's scared of lightning. That makes it feel better. Yes. But I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it was the best executed scenes of the game. It was just kind of... It's probably among the worst, actually. Weird. <laughs> yeah. But the, the point is that like, she's... Like, not the fact that she's scared. I get yeah. her backstory and all that. It's just the way it was executed was a little bit... It feels Why like did she, like, try to become a, like, uh, Guillermo del Toro monster <laughs> and, like, crawl and on the Crawling ground. with her head, like... I'm, and I guess it's supposed to be funny. I didn't find it particularly funny, but, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. anyway. Um, the other part was funny, though. She's just begging them to please take a break. Yeah, and I... Because she's so scared of the light. I'm curious. I, I just wonder, she should want to get through this as quickly as possible. So the yeah. fact that she wants to stay there, and then she's in there, and they're not moving, and the lightning's still hitting, and she's still screaming for every hit, and she's sort of um, she's just prolonging. She's sort of the whole thing. Uh, what do you call it? Like naively or against hope, wishing maybe the storm will pass, and tomorrow we can Eventually. go. Eventually, and and because well, Aaron mentioned Aaron, this, yes, like you did didn't you really actually think, think yeah. the storm was going to pass? And she's like you? maybe. <laughs> okay, well you just made it worse for yourself. Yeah, cause. right. You have to stay here longer. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. But you go into Rin's shop, and it, it's interesting because he actually recognizes Aaron here. And he goes and talks to him. And he says, Sir Aaron, I wonder if you remember me 10 years ago at the beginning of Braska's Calm? And Aaron says, Yes, I, said, I should thank you. And he says, oh, no. Not at all. I could no, not dude. leave a wounded man to die. Yes. However, I was surprised when I saw you gone the next morning with that wound. Yeah, a normal man would not have been, would able, not to have been able to walk, right? Yeah. I'd and rather like, drop that subject. I don't want to talk about it. Yep. Another like, thing, okay. that guy, when he walks in, because he's all better, remember? Yes. He walks he in, looks right Riku. at Riku, and like Riku kind of shakes her like, head, oh, and he sh just like looks so <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, they're trying to keep it a secret from walking. So there's a few, yeah, yeah, there's a few things under the surface going on here. Yeah. It's so funny. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, then they're all kind of worried about Yuna. Titus goes back to check on her, and he's sort of listening through the door, and he's leaning against it. Um, and I actually did pick up a few of the words that Jiskel is speaking oh, um, yeah. that, that she's listening to. It's sort of like inaudible. It's like it's hard, some, yeah. some sort of static. But then uh, he says, as punishment for my deeds, mm. inaudible, his mother, inaudible, I implore you. And then he kind of like falls through the door and opens yeah. it. And she's like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. And and it's kind of an awkward moment where he's like, uh, you know, like, uh, so was that just cool? <laughs> well, the, it takes him like a minute of fumbling and before yeah. he's like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah. But it took him a long time to come to that. Yeah. And so he's like, whoa, was that that just cool guy? And she's like, yes, the sphere is his will and it says take care of my son. And then Waka, and anyways, he goes on to say, well, I know one way we can take care of him. I don't know. Not sure exactly what he's implying there, but it does not sound good. <laughs> and she's like, sorry, and she like runs away, right? Oh yeah, she books it, and then Waka gives Comes us the, uh, the headlock, the, the yep. worst like older brother headlock. Yeah, like, ah. uh, like so she'll frustrating. tell us when she's ready, like stop, you know, bugging her kind of a thing. He's yeah. like, all right, fine. Um, okay, so then you leave the next day. Uh, further down the road is when Yuna decides to announce her intention to marry Seymour. Uh, a couple of interesting things in this conversation. Lulu inquires as to whether the reason she's decided on that is because of the Jiskel's fear. Mm -hmm. And Aaron then steps in and asks to see it. I thought that was interesting. He's yes. like, wait, let me see what that says. Yes. <laughs> and she's and like, she no. Says, not till later. Yeah, she's like, I can't show you that. Right. I need to talk to Seymour first. I need to talk to Maester Seymour first. And that, that, that it, this is a very personal matter, so she's yeah. not going to let him see it. But I thought it was interesting that Aaron's immediate response to Jiskel mm -hmm. gave you a sphere was, let me see what's on that yeah, sphere. Yeah. Like, I need to know what that says. It's, it's a reminiscent of when Riku wants to join the party and he's like, show me your eyes. Yes. Like, he, he kind of has a good feel for what's yeah, going on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Ar but, but he, he then says, basically, uh, as long as you finish your pilgrimage, like, I'm okay with you doing this, but you've got to finish the pilgrimage. He's, like, yeah. insisting. It's, that's it's, the it's, only it, thing. That's an interesting thing yeah, to me. Yeah. Auron is making sure yes. that she finishes the pilgrimage. Right. You can do whatever else you want, I don't care, but as long yeah. as you do that. And she's like, oh, of course I'm going to do that, right? Okay. She never questioned that. So he's like, okay, as long as that's the case, then, then we're good. Then all else is your choice. Yeah. And Titus is, is objecting to that. Like, what do you mean? Like... <laughs> 
how can you say that, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, he, and he goes on to explain that as long as she journeys, it's her privilege to be able to make this choice or not, right? It's a summoner's privilege, I think is what the words he uses. Mm. And then Waka, I think, even steps in and is like, well, can't you just like talk to Seymour? Like, do you have to marry him kind of a thing? And she's like, <laughs> I don't know, but you know, it's important that if this makes people happy, you know, if I can do anything to make the people's spirit happy, that I'll do it. Right, even for a moment. Yeah, and Riku sort of tries to comfort her a little bit, and the, the thunder keeps happening. She yells at the thunder to be quiet. I thought that was kind of funny. Yes. I'm like, be quiet! <laughs> yeah. Like, Uru, urusai, urusai. Uh, uh, anyways, offering her support. Um, but then you pass out, finally, of the Thunder Plains into Makalania Woods. And Titus and Aaron hang back to talk for a minute. And yeah. of course, Titus is worried about Yuna, and Aaron kind of points that out. And um, he says that she's going to um, negotiate. negotiate. Yeah. And then he goes, which is fine, but I fear that Seymour's the better negotiator. Yeah. And he, right. he can't really put his finger on what. Yeah, he doesn't know exactly he's like, what's going on. Because Titus asks him, like, why is she doing this? It doesn't make any sense. Like, what is she thinking? It's like she's he's negotiating like, I suspect something. That she's going to do this in order to negotiate with Seymour. Yeah. And he's like, well, what? Like, negotiate what? He's like, hmm, I wonder. I wonder. So he's not quite sure, but yeah. he has some suspicion as to what she's doing, and she's trying yeah. to leave everybody out of it. Or yes, like, on purpose for their yeah. own good. Yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, then speaks about the fact that Seymour's the better negotiator. Yes. He'll get the upper hand on her, probably. Probably. And not only, not only because. Um, like he's just a better negotiator. She's seventeen, right? Like that's yes. part of it. I don't know how old Seymour is, but I think he's older than seventeen. Yes. Um, but not only that, but what Seymour has asked for, whatever Yuna could ask for from him in exchange for the marriage, isn't up to the value of the marriage itself, right? Yeah. So that even if Yuna's like, okay, I'll do it if you do this or that, it's like whatever it is that he can do for her isn't nearly as big as what she's doing for him. Yeah. And just that alone is like, yeah, he's got the upper hand here. Right. So, um, so he has, t Titus is asking, well, why aren't we helping her then? Like, why don't we do something about it if, you, yeah, if that's yeah. the case? And Aaron says that Yuna wants it that way, right? She's trying to keep everyone yeah. else from getting caught up she's, in the in She's the plan. her own person, yeah. And he says, that's the way she is. She's naive, serious to a fault, and doesn't ask for help. Yuna is easy to read but hard to guard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stand by her always. <laughs> oh, I love this, stand by her always. So we mm. just learned that she's going to say yes to, to Seymour. Mm -hmm. She's going to marry Seymour. Mm. It's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But she's, Aaron just tells us to always stand be beside her. her. Yep. How do you do that when she's married mm -hmm. to another dude? Yep. What husband is like, oh, you have a guy that's with you all the time? <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> About your age, you know, yeah, well, you know. I'm okay with That's not going to happen, right? Yeah. And so, the, and he said always, always. So mm -hmm. anyways, Oren has, he's, he's got his suspicions. Yeah. And I like how Tita sort of remarks in his inner monologue here about how calm he is, being surprised by how calm he was during all of this. Because yeah. obviously he likes her. Um, but he's, he's realizing that she's not doing this for love. That's one part of it that makes it easy for him to accept. Yeah. But he's like, well, at least I was telling myself that. Mm -hmm. But the other part of it is just accepting the fact that eh, it probably wasn't going to work out anyways. Like, she's a summoner and I'm yeah. some freaking guy who doesn't even belong here. Some like jo Joe Shrow. So he starts to kind of accept, okay, I guess that wasn't going to work out. Right. Temporarily. And that's why he's able to kind of just stay upbeat and be like, all right, you know, let's go. Like, come on, let's keep going, guys. Let's do it. Because, like, what's he going to do? Like, yeah. leave the group, you know? It's like, right. well. And he comments on that yeah. in a minute when he gets to the Jack sphere. Exactly. Right? Like, exactly. is he going to abandon these people now? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing his dad went through, right? But you also run into Bartello along the way. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, where's Donna? He, like, got separated from her. Uh -huh. And he's like freaking out, and I like how Oren helps him to stay calm and yeah. teaches him about the importance of not panicking. And now, if this were anyone other than Oren telling him this, yes. I don't know if it would have gone over. As right, well. but because it's Oren, he's just like, "Well, how can I be calm when she's missing?" And he's just like, "It's just because it's Oren that he's yeah. like, okay, thank you, Oren. I will." Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Do you need help?" And he goes, "No." You've helped me a thousand times more than anyone ever could by your words of inspiration. Because he just thinks that way about Oren. It's yeah. so it's so good. I love it. And so he kind of goes back on his yeah. way. Just a really quick scene there. 
by the way, look at these trees. Look at these yes, trees. Yes, the shape of the trees. Remember a certain dream that a yes. certain person had a couple episodes <laughs> ago. These are basically <coughs> that exact design. Yep. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, along the path, Oren kind of stops for a second and he wants to show uh, the party something. Yeah. He's like, he's something that you need to see, right? And he kind of hacks his way through some trees and brings them into this area where there's like kind of a large tree and a pool of water there. And um, he says, uh, uh, Titus says, this place, this is just water, isn't it? Right, well, what's so special about this? Right. And um, Arwen says, this is what spheres are made of. It absorbs and preserves people's memories. So the mm. spheres that they use yeah. in this world is almost like their cameras. Yeah, it's like a home video. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just this sphere. It's like an organic <laughs> material that comes from the world. Yeah. And it can actually like take or record memories from people. Yeah, right? yeah, that's crazy. So you can kind of carry this thing around and, and record events. Um, so uh, it actually looks similar, not exactly the same, but similar to the save place. Yes, the and save stone. Given that the function spheres, of yeah. memory and saving, it's like there there could be some diegetic element to that. Yeah, totally. Where it's like these. This is like a, a thing, you know. It's like in Harvest Moon sixty four, how you write in your diary, and it's yeah. like you're preserving the memory so that you can open your save spot. And I love yeah. it. Yeah, and I mean, even in leveling up, <clears> right? You you sort of like, yeah. You you apply strength spheres onto the board, and that like yeah. unlocks new memories. Maybe a little bit reminiscent, yes. say, Materia yeah. in Final Fantasy VII, where the memories. Yeah, it's of like memories. People who came with the ancients that came before the ancients. you of, and their magic, you can yeah. access that through the stone. Yeah. So this is like the spheres are almost like the crystal motif, which is all throughout Final yeah. Fantasy. Well, in this it's forest, like this there's trees, but there's also these massive crystals, you right? Know? And that's kind of feeding the pyreflies, or or it comes from the pyreflies either way. Yeah, and even when Arn is <laughs> hacking through the trees, it's 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 the sound of crystal. Yeah, shattering. it's like glass. Yeah. 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 So this is kind of like FF10's version of the crystal motif, are these spheres, right? Yeah. These crystal spheres that they use to record their memories. So, um, so this is where you get your first ject sphere of the game, and there's a whole bunch of these. Now, one thing to mention, maybe it's too late for some of you, um, if you're playing the international or the HD re-release of the mm -hmm. game, um, Pretty soon you're going to be locked out from being able to backtrack much for quite a while. Mm. Um, and there are eventually going to be dark aeons that will be guarding oh. areas where some of these spheres are located. <laughs> right. That are very, very hard to defeat and will require a lot of grinding. Yeah. So if you want to see mm. all of these ject spheres and not have to do like post-game content, now after this scene is probably a good time to backtrack all the way back to Besaid yeah. to get all the spheres because you'll collect them along the way. There's several of them. And um, we'll kind of talk about each one. I don't know if you saw all the Jack spheres in your playthrough. Did you see all of them? I doubt I saw all of them. Let's watch <laughs> them and then we'll comment on them like as we're watching them because um, they're pretty good. Uh, yeah. it, it basically like chronicles the journeys of Braska. Yeah, Jack, well, I've, I saw some of them. Aaron. I just, yeah. I just don't. I'm not confident in myself that I can <laughs> see every single them. sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I had several. I had several. That's yeah, so sure. this is the first Jekt sphere you get in the game. And it shows um, Jekt, who's holding the sphere in this scene, sort of like filming Aaron and Braska and talking yeah. to them, right? Just home video style. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Exactly. It's so good. And you kind of get the sense of how serious Aaron was at the time. He's almost like a different oh, person. Yeah. And he's constantly like, put that down. He yeah. doesn't carry his sleeve in. He's got his sleeve off. Yeah, completely you know, he's, off. It's yep. not like resting his arm. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so he's kind of talking to Braska and to Aaron, and um, he's like, hey man, like, uh, isn't this like a big occasion? Like, why, uh, yeah, why yeah. are all the crying women and the children? Yes. And where are all the crowds all the cheering? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, you know, uh, too many goodbyes makes it harder to leave or something like that yes. kind of a thing. At, at the same time, though, I think he also mentions something like, I'm not, I'm not the hero that they want Yes. To win, my my wife's all dead. I'm right. a nobody. Right. Nobody. It, we're not. We're not that level. Right? Yeah. Right. Uh, it, we get a lot of, more of that detail in some of the other Jack spheres, but mm. Braska was not necessarily like highly favored. No. In Yevon at that time. Yes. Now at that he is because he defeated him. Oh, of course. Him, but at the time, he yeah. was you know 
maybe a little rebellious among the summoners of yeah. Spiro, right? Or seen that way at least. Um, so, but but what's interesting is that Jack says that he he wants to document his journey for his wife and son. Mm -hmm. So he's doing this because he wants to like take it back. So he he was planning all along yeah. to go back, be with his wife and son again. And he wants to yeah. show them where he was. So he's thinking of Titus during yeah. this journey. Again, we're getting this different view of the guy than yeah. the one Titus portrayed the whole beginning of the game. Yeah. Yeah, so that's true, that's Jack true. was not necessarily this bad dude that Titus saw him as, and he admitted that recently in the Far Plane, right? Yeah. Um, so, but let's this see is here. where we're finally getting to see Jack's memories. And yes, it's, it's 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 pretty cool, and yeah, that I think that was that first memory there was when Brusk is leaving. But. Yeah, they're leaving to go on their journey, and um, he also talks about. I thought this was interesting. Jack talks about coming back. After defeating Sen, he's like, yes. when it's all over, oh. you know, we'll come back and have a big parade for Braska and He says celebrate. something else about Braska um, talking about the, a gift for your daughter, something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, this could be a souvenir for your daughter, something yeah. like that. And um, yeah, yeah, he's just very similar to Titus. Very similar to Titus. Yeah. Very similar. Um, uh, there's also another scene that kind of plays after that where they're in the next area we go to after the, uh, the, the forest. The Makawani Woods. It's like that sort of a the icy place. Icy place. Yes, exactly, exactly. In that's front of the, I think that's what I'm there. talking about. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, stand over there, get closer together. Yeah, yeah. And Oren and Jack are kind of like, you know, teasing each Super other back awkward, and forth. They're like, yeah. lighten up, like. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that serious, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's showing so, that they're a little bit at odds. You know. I wonder if people have a similar, because. I remember how awkward it is in the 90s when your parents would bust out the video camera yeah. and everyone's just being weird and they'd say, wave to the camera. Okay, say hi to grandma. <laughs> We're mailing this tape to grandma. Hey, grandma. Like, it's awkward, you know? Yeah, right. But uh, do people get that anymore? Like, is that a thing? Everyone I don't just know. has phones and... Could they could just... My yeah. kids, it's... It's not a special thing at all, and they're not when at all filming. awkward in front of a camera. That's actually a really good point. Because it's every day, not every that day, is at least once really a week I whip out. And so this, the idea of being awkward and acting as though this is a formal photo shoot when you can just take a video whenever you want, yeah. is I think something that's a product a of its time. A relic of its time. Yeah. Totally is. Yeah. Totally is. And I, we get that, but I, <laughs> I wonder know. if at past a certain age, oh, I wonder man. if other people have that similar experience. That's really funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are just going to feel like cameras are normal, everyday things, right. you know? Um, okay, then the last part of this, it shows Jack sitting in the same pool where they are right now. Yes. And he's talking directly says, to hey, Titus. hey, if you're this. seeing this, then... Yeah, he's talking directly to his son. Yeah. He says, there's a time when you have to stop crying and move on. You'll be fine. Remember, you're my son. And then he begins to struggle with something. He's trying to say something? Yes, but even before that, too, he says, like, um, he says, now's not the time, or I never, what, it's something like, I, I didn't cry. And he said, and then he softens it a little. He goes, well, maybe, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he says, like, you know, it's not, you know, be strong and, and something along the lines of maybe it's not that horrible if you, if you shed a tear or two, you know? Sure, yeah. But then, yeah, he's struggling to say something, and his last, his last uh, line is, anyway, I believe in you. Yeah, be, be good. Be good. Goodbye. Yeah, so he was struggling to say I love yes, you. Yes, exactly. He was struggling to say, right? And that's when, as we're leaving, Auron tells us, hey, yes. just so you know, your father loved you. And we're like, shut up, go away. And he's like, <laughs> I'm just telling you. Okay, he, 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 let's keep going. He told me that he struggled to say it. He, he didn't know to how to express, express it, it. Exactly. but he did. Yes. And I thought you should know that. And he, and he just has to hear that from Auron. Yeah. He can't hear it from his own father. Right. He also says, Arn also says, uh, Jack was always talking about going home to Xanarkin. That's why he was taking all those pictures yes. to show you when he returned. But as he journeyed with us and came to understand Spira and Braska's resolve, it happened gradually, but Jack changed. He decided he would join Braska in his fight against him. And that's when Titus says, so then he gave up on going home. Um, and, and Arn says that was his decision. And then we get the inner monologue from Titus here. Again, so drawing parallels. He's kind of... I guess I understood. My old man, he knew there was no way to go back home, back to Xanarkand. He wanted to go home, but he knew he couldn't. He couldn't go on until he accepted it. Besides, even if he had found a way back, I don't think he would have left his friends behind before the journey was complete. Which is the exact situation Titus is That's, now in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, even if I could go back right now, 
would I just like abandon Yuna and everybody yeah. in the middle of this? And like, no, I'm too involved now. I have relationships right. here. Like, this is important to me. Yeah. Um, like, there comes a certain point where the world has changed you, and you're like yeah. going to see it through. And that's exactly what had happened to his father. And that's when he says, "All right, guys, let's go." So real quick, I want to talk about Braska just for a little bit. Yep. Um, he's got some interesting uh, thematic design elements on his person. It's great. Mm -hmm. So Braska wears a black and red robe with a lotus flower motif. So yeah. it's the lotus flowers with that, all those triangles, you know, going down. Yep. It's like a bloomed flower, but it's upside down. And um, it's an eight point, right, which there is, is important. But um, his headdress, I'm going to talk a lot about his headdress here. It's clearly made to seem Middle Eastern. Mm. Right, he's got a jewel in the middle with yeah, the, with that um, like the almost feathery. Looking it's like a thing. feather type thing going back, and then it's there, and it's um, I don't know the I don't know the terminology, but he's wearing a head covering yeah. that covers all of his hair and leaves his, his face. It's almost like it's kind of uh, tucked what in. they wear in Aladdin or something. Yes, it's like yeah. that. It's like that. It, it, it's it's a just a Middle Eastern kind of thing, you know. And I know the Al Bed are were made to seem like they had some of that Arabic influence, you mm. know, within the culture of the Al Bed. And uh, they're, you know, I don't know. It just it, it's it it feels like it's there. Even in the word Al Bed, right? Mm -hmm. It's anything Al. Al means the, right? Yeah. So Bed means whatever it means. It means the, the yeah. Bed, right? So. Um, He's got that, uh, I believe, from his wife, right? Because it's a green jewel that he has on his forehead. And his wife has green eyes. And we know this with Yuna. Yuna has one green eye and one blue eye. Now, Braska had blue eyes, but he wears the green gem around the Middle Eastern-looking you know, headdress that he's wearing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the rest of his garments, the lotus flower, very Asian, very South and East Asian. Um, and then he's holding his staff. Oh, this is great. This is great. Okay, so real quick, I'm just gonna, I'll just read my notes here because I'm gonna miss stuff if I don't. Okay. So his chest has what seemed to be a variant on alchemical symbols. And alchemy, alchemy is a, an Arabic word. And that's the yes. all. And as like I said, anything with all <laughs> is, so alchemy, alchemy, um, I think. And chemia, it means, if you go all the way back to where it stems from, it t technically means magic, but it's the chem, C H E M, it's where the word chemistry comes from, yeah. right? But it means magic <laughs> if you go back far enough. But alchemy is, um, is alchemy, right? And that's an, a Middle Eastern reference. Um, so I can see the sun with ye the Yevon symbol inside of it. There's the alchemy symbol for the sun. Um, and then also read the moon, which is kind of the opposite going back. So you have the sun and the moon on his chest ah, yes. plate there. Um, that's just a thing. I, I don't know that we can read into it too much, but um, the moon is black and the sun is white with Yevon is the sun, right? And the moon is smaller. Um, but then it moves upwards and becomes harder for me to read. It's not blatant alchemic symbols anymore. It's just kind of some circles and connections. And maybe it's saying something, but I, I looked up stuff. I couldn't tell what exactly that was saying mm. um, with those symbols. Um, it looks alchemical, but I don't know. It, that's just the general idea that they're going for. But his staff is really cool. So it's a half circle pattern that looks like a sensu, which is the Japanese fan, right? Mm. And so... He's got, um, it's just, it's a half circle, but it's got the, the red coming out, and it looks just like a fan. Um, so um, on the headdress is a green gem, like his wife's eyes, but on the, on the staff is a blue gem. Mm. And you can think of it as the, 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 the green gem being on his forehead symbolizes wisdom, right? So he has the wisdom of his wife. The, his head and, his, and guarding his heart is, is the... Um, more Arabic influence, right? So he's got his wife, the wisdom of the Albed, the wisdom of his wife, but then the power of, well, himself, his culture, Yevon, would yeah. be essentially that, and that's his staff. And it's got the blue gem, which symbolizes his eyes, right? So it's oh, a half circle. Yeah. The half circle of the fan, and this is true in Japanese as well, it symbolizes half perfection. Like mm. there's, there's an implicit other half, right? Yes. So it's a half circle. So he's, he is half, and there is an invisible other half that's above the half that he has, right? Because mm. you'd think if it was the fan that it would be face up. But the way he's holding the staff, it's face down, right? Yeah. So above it is is what you would consider the, the other half of him, right? Which would I, I suppose would be his wife. Um, 
So it's like a half completion, that's that symbol there. Uh, the implied invisible other half would be taken up by his wife or her memory. The sensu has a symbolic meaning as well. With the center point, the blue gemstone means birth. It's the starting point. And then the rays, like you could think of it like the rising sun. Have you, you've seen the flag of the rising sun, right? And it's the, the sun and all the rays going out. And that's uh -huh. kind of what the fan seems to symbolize in some way. But that's the point of origin, is, is the middle point. That's the point of birth. And then all of the different um, places where it fans out to make the fan is a different potential that um, a potential from the birth, right? Mm. So you exist here and you could go here, you could go here, you could go here. They're all potential paths that you can take from the middle. And they all kind of meet together in one spot, but they all fan out in different directions, right? Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the color, it's gold. So that symbolizes the sun and wealth and red means power and luck or whatever. Um, all that kind of stuff. The fan's also related to wind or spirit. The word for spirit also means air in Japanese, and that's true in a ton of languages. Yeah. That spirit and air is like kind of the same idea there. And so when you think of the other half, if there's an implicit invisible other half, it's it's a spirit, right? Yeah. Um, then that's what I got there. That's what I got. That's, that's the symbolism really, really of like Braska's outfit. The green gem and the blue yes. gem. Yes, and how you can see how they're separate and what they symbolize. Yes. The rod is power. Yeah. Right, but the the but the, the the head is wisdom. That's awesome. It's great. That's really cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And then I took this note afterwards. Things may have played out in a little different way, but the music that plays during that memory moment oh, yes. uh, with Jack's memory it sounds like Cowboy Bebop. It's just like oh, this, yeah. <laughs> this like Western guitar solo yeah, yeah. Um, classical guitar kind of thing. Yeah. And it's really cool. I love it. Yeah. Um. So, at this point. This is when I would recommend going back and getting the other Jack spheres. Um, yeah. Rather than waiting well, until Well, there's later. some other things to go back and see. Like, if you haven't yet at this point, um, you could go back to, um, not Kilika, but the Blitzball place. What's it called? El, um, where's the are where the arena is? The Blitzball arena? Uh, in um, Luca. Luca. So you can go back to Luca now. Um, and after the Meehan Massacre, you can go back to Luca and talk to people, and it, they actually change the NPC's dialogue. The NPCs actually start talking about the Meehan Massacre. And they start uh, saying, like, oh, I can't believe that happened. I yes, wonder, yes. you know, that was close and mm -hmm. this was a big deal. A lot of people around and like there, the, the dialogue changes. Where there were crusaders before, now there will be yeah. warrior monks yes. who are blaming things mm -hmm. on the on crusaders, the, right? Yeah. Yeah. They do a really good job of that in this game. Yeah, it's after super certain cool. events have happened, you go back and visit, people will be talking about it. They're, they change what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, right. I love it. Okay, so let's play through a couple of these um, Jack Spheres. Uh, so, well, you can tell me just which ones you've seen, I guess. Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, we'll see. I did see the souvenir one. Everything, Ooh, I did I not. Oh, dude. This, but Guard Lord Brasco well. So it's a Keenock, right? I didn't. I've never seen this one. I heard they made you second in command. You know that promotion was meant for you. Oh, I didn't know that. That's why he's resentful no, of him, right? That's crazy. I will see you again. Yes. Well, I love the song, by the way. Mm, good Going music. Already? You will tell me about Zanakin when you return, won't you? Remember how he told him, hey, did you see Xanarkin in that scene when they were together, right? Yeah. He was recording that for some so reason. Tinoch was the one that, okay. Oh, dude, I love with the clothes he's wearing. It's so <laughs> Who are you? Oh, and there's the 12 dots. The I didn't bring that checked. up. The man from Xanarkin, are you not? What of it? I have seen this one. Yeah. So this yeah. is where I've seen this they one. originally um, recruit Jack. He, yeah, he obviously they get him he from came, prison. He I came love into <laughs> he came into Spira, got captured by somebody. I probably did something got to get arrested. Drunk. Yeah, got arrested. And and Braska comes and rescues him, and then he takes him on his pilgrimage with him. Yeah. I I've always thought it would be cool to get a prequel game of Final Fantasy X. That's oh. the journey of these three. Oh yeah, that really would be. They've made three FF10 games. They didn't make this. <laughs> like this, this is the, This is kind of the period I would like to see like fleshed out yeah. more. Oh, this one in the Thunder Plains. You see this? Oh, I don't think this so. This one was good. No, I don't think so. 
So they're in the Thunder Plains, right? I didn't freaking want to go back here, dude. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> so Aaron's recording this one. He's like pissed that he's not like filming it right. <laughs> and then he gets struck by lightning. <laughs> no, yeah. I love it. Now there's a scene for posterity. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's kind of just a fun moment between them showing how they're developing. Now this is the part with the with the um shoe puff, right? Just after oh. that. Did you see this one? I can't remember if I saw this one. This is when he I'll decides to, to stop drinking. I may have missed this one too. So he had just attacked. Dude, if the there's shoot 20 off. minutes of these, I missed most of them in the game. So Aaron's filming after Jack had just attacked that shoe puff. Of course, Aaron's you know gonna do that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of get back at him, show him how foolish he is. Shooting me for? So you don't do anything stupid again. I can't believe you attacked that shoe puff. Lord Braska had to pay the handler for damages from his own travel money. I said I was sorry. It's never gonna happen again. I promise. Ah, a promise. Which you'll forget come tomorrow. <laughs> Oren, please, he did apologize. He knows he was wrong. That's it. Only thing I drink from now on is shoe puff milk. <laughs> <laughs> So that was his real reason. That, I love he that. He wanted them to forgive his him. His real reason for quitting is so that it, he doesn't want to disappoint his wife and kid. Like Not that. because, oh, I'm embarrassed that we had to give all the money away. Yeah. But do you see how that could have been misinterpreted by yes. the way that Oren told it? But the real motivation behind that was his wife and son. There you go. That's what all these oh, seem to reveal is that I he's that. doing this for his wife and kid. For he keeps talking about his family. Yeah. yeah. This is where they fight that same monster that attacks the chocobos. There's not really much to this one, I don't think. I can't remember this one. Oh, this is just where he says it's the right thing to do. Remember how Oren? Oh, he about quoted that? him earlier. Yeah. So he says. Uh, Love that. So like that kind of shows that, right? So that was a pretty good scene. Yeah. Um, let's see. You get this one on the ship, I think, if you go travel back. They're on the way to Besaid right now. Then we go north from Bevel and climb Mount Gagazet. Beyond it lies Sanarkand. Sanarkand, huh? It's been in ruins for a thousand years, right? So the legends say, no one knows for sure. It still could be your Sanarkand. Thanks for trying, Oren. So yeah, the, you can see that their relationship's kind of developing. Yeah. This one, oh, it's part I of the same. If one, I, I went with you guys, I might find a way to go back, but it's not that easy. I'm sorry. No need to apologize, Braska. It's not your fault. I should be thinking about fighting Sin now, anyway. Xanarkand can wait, but I will find my way back. Be careful, Jet. Hey, I'll be all right. Oh, this is an NPC. After that, this, the next one's the last one we She'll watched. Right. She's strong, like her mother was. And so, yeah, this will be the last one that you can get for now. Smallest heap of huts I ever seen. Now, that looks like a fine place to live. Oren, my lord, when this is over. You bring Yuna here. I want her to lead a life far away from this conflict. You have my word. I will bring her here. Thank you, Oren. You're a good friend. What are you guys doing? Let's go. I'm so hungry I could eat a shoe puff whole. <laughs> Sorry. Well, let's go then. Okay. Sweet. So yeah. So we so they do a really good job, kind of just like. 
like I said, like I think the main point of what you pull from these is that um, his motivation, Jack's motivation through the yeah. whole thing was all about his family. Yes. And you kind of have to see that from him. Yeah. Because Oren would tell us, oh, hey, of course he did stuff for you guys, you know? Yeah. He wasn't all bad. Uh, but we have to see it ourselves to believe it because yeah. Titus just doesn't have that experience with his right. dad. Right. So, yeah, really good stuff. Nice. Really yeah, nice little cool. scenes that build out the former pilgrimage a little more. You get to meet Braska and, like, know him better. Jack and Oren, how he used yeah. to be. And it's just it's really nice to I see I like him. him. You see Keenock. Yeah, and Keenock as well. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, okay, so after leaving Makalania Woods, you arrive at uh, the next uh, Rin shop. It's in kind of a like an icy area. Um, it's Clasco. He, I think he's the name of the the third Chocobo Knight guy who's always lagging yes. behind. Yeah, he's he's there. Yep. Taking care of the Chocobos. Yeah. And I think Aron remarks like, "Hey, it sounds like you know exactly what these Chocobos want. Yeah. Every every you know whenever they make a sound, you can talk to them." And maybe you should be a chocobo breeder. Yep, and right. he's like, I was thinking the same yep. thing. And so you can pick between two options. Yeah. Stay a knight or become a breeder. And if you tell him to become a breeder, I think he gives you a, an item later in the game or something. But yeah, class goes more of a chocobo breeder. He's more of yeah. a lover, not a fighter, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then uh, Trommel comes to collect Yuna. They're going to like take her away for the ceremony to marry Seymour, right? So he's like, we've got to follow the traditions of the Guado. Like, I'll take her from and here. And she needs to go alone. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Aaron says to her as she's leaving, we're all with you. Do as you will. And then he apologizes to, to Titus. Sorry, <laughs> I love that, this. That was your line. You right? were supposed to say You're something. You're the one who should have said that. And so yeah. Titus goes running up and he whistles. The, the, the little whistle that they yeah, did, right? Yeah, yeah. Whistles after her and waves. Um, which was a nice, but then like they yeah. immediately get attacked by I, Albed. The freaking Albed, dude. Sheesh. <laughs> Albed show up and try gosh. to kidnap her again. Yeah, I love that. Um, now, as they're kind of trying to fight him off, um, I think Trommel tries to grab Yuna's hand and pull her like out of the fray, and she like rips her arm away and runs yeah. back to the she's party to help She's going to stay them. with everybody, yeah. Yeah, and she's like, oh, he's like, oh, lady, summon her. Um, now, this is where... Uh, the Albed character that we met back at the beginning of the game on the ship with Riku and uh, like all the Albed that rescued Titus. Yeah, right? the one who's doing those funny movements. Yes, right. Yeah. He comes and yells at Riku. Now, like I was saying before, when I edit this, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it into its like own segmented part of the timeline, so you can skip it. Okay. If you don't want to know what the Albed language says. Oh, yeah. Because you, you gain all the primers and you can go back, play the game on New Game Plus and re actually read what all the Albed people say. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just going to go ahead and say now what he says to her. Um, so, anyways, look at the timeline, look at the time codes, and you can skip it if you don't want to see that yet. Um, so this is brother, Riku's brother. Mm -hmm. He's just called brother. And he says, Riku, don't interfere or you get this, and then they bring out that giant a like freaking cannon tank, thing. Yeah. yeah, tank cannon. It shows off all of its missiles. Yep, and he's like, "Your precious magic and aeons are sealed," and that's kind of how the boss fight works, right? Get them. There's like this little yeah. thing that floats around, and it like makes it so you can't cast magic, you can't do certain or things, do your yeah. summons. You have to destroy that, and then you can actually attack the yeah. thing. So that's that boss fight. At the end of that, he calls out to her again, "Riku, I will tell father." And. Uh, Riku says to him, I am a guardian of Yuna, you see? Yuna is safe. We will guard her. She is safe. So this is the second time they've tried to kidnap Yuna. And what she's saying is, it's okay. She's safe. Yeah. I'm here. So it gives you the other side of the coin as to why they were trying to kidnap yes. Yuna. Yeah. It's not what you thought it was. Not what Waka thought it was, especially. Right. right? Um, and then he says to her, you do this alone, sister. And then he runs away. So that's what they're saying in Albed there. Yeah. Now, this is a big okay. scene to break down. <laughs> I love it. As soon as the fight's over and that back and forth goes, Waka's like, how do you speak Albed? Yep. And he just kind of, you see the wheels working in his head, and he's just like, he is so upset. Yep. He is so mad. Um, Everybody because knew. Because she admits to being Albed, and then Titus is like, it's not a big deal. And he's like, you knew? 
Yeah. Yeah, we knew. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. That, Everybody. That's a part of the part that hurts. Yeah. Almost worse than the yeah. fact that he's that she is Albed in the first place. Is that everybody knew. knew? And they knew how Waka feels about the Albed. And no they let them. it happen anyways. Yeah, yeah. Especially, yeah, anyways, he's just so pissed about this, right? This is great. I can't believe I've been traveling with an Albed, a heathen. Now, this yeah. this argument between Riku and um, Waka is like the classic uh, secular religious debate. Oh gosh! Like literally, like <laughs> the foundation of this yeah, argument. Yeah, it's oh, the blindly for all following time. the the religion, and then oh yeah, yeah. She tries to say, "I we have no problem with Yevon." Yes. And he says, "Yes, you do, because you use uh, Machina, which is against yes. the teachings." And she says, "Well, like." You know, who says that it was because of right. Machina that sin was... As Yevon says, okay, but who else says? <laughs> well, show me some proof. Like, you can't yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah. We, it, you need to have more than and that. And then he goes, well, can you prove that it wasn't? <laughs> yes, and that she's was like, the part that really made me laugh. <laughs> can you prove that it wasn't yes. that? Yes, <laughs> and she's like, no. <laughs> I, I really liked the, uh, that's not good enough. Yevon says this, Yevon says that. Can't you think for yourself? Yes, so yes. Classic, well, then you classic. tell me. Where did sin come from then, huh? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, she says. But, you right. know, it's okay not to know something. Right, right. But just don't assert something when you don't have proof. And then he's like, <laughs> you badmouth Yevon, and that's all you come up with? She's like, but that doesn't mean you have to do whatever they say without thinking. Nothing will ever change that way. And I really like this. Nothing will ever change that way. Yes. That's the Albed's motivation. We've got to change the way things are because yes. it's not okay. And he says nothing has to change. That was the part that I took the note on. Yes. Yeah. Walk is pissed. Nothing has to change. It's fascinating. They aren't showing his eyes when he says that. Oh, really? They're, the camera cuts off. It's nose down, mm. and they don't show his eyes for this particular part. I don't know exactly why they did it other than, oh, well, what I wrote here is that... Um, it's, he's just a body talking, not a head thinking, Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. So he's regurgitating the things to say, right? But he's not thinking about what he's saying. And, uh, and so yes. the camera kind of cuts off his brain, so to speak, and his <laughs> eyes in favor of just showing his mouth and his body. Well, well think of how absurd it's that statement is. Yes, nothing, nothing has, to, has change. to change. And it, like things are fine how they are. When you live in a world surrounded by this much death all the time for a thousand that's, years, that's what and she you says. think that nothing has to change. You want sin to keep coming back? Yes. Nothing has to change? Yes. There might be a way to stop it, you know? Right. And he says, sin will be gone once we atone for our past mistakes. So he's saying it's yes. permissible for sin to kill us like this yes. because we Some have an other atoned people yet. who aren't us. It's original sin. It's this is the idea of original sin. Yes. Of um, because. Adam and Eve ate some apples. Yes. We all get to be killed by sin over and over, like Prometheus with the devouring vulture, every <laughs> single forever. And this yes. is this is, and it's okay. Yeah. This is the level of indoctrination that has gone on. It's permissible that we are massacred yeah. like this yes. because we have not atoned yet. That's that's the idea. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I feel like I just mischaracterized the Adam and Eve story. I get it. I was per I'm doing that on purpose. I'm purposefully showing it in this debate yes. of the two extremes, right? right? And that's, of course, yeah, Riku's on one side and Waka's on the other. Yeah. But anyways, and then I'm just so saying, she, it's original sin. That's what Waka's talking about. Yeah, so she's like, well, when and how will we atone? We don't even know the criteria yes. for atoning. Yeah, like, exactly. what do we have to do? And he says, if you keep faith in Yevon's teachings, it will be gone one day. And then she just gives up. Like, why do we even bother, right? Like, this is stupid. Yes, that's more or less. Um, and then Aaron calls over to start fixing these <laughs> snowmobiles. This is the best. And Waka's like, are we seriously? <laughs> Can I use Al Bed Machina here? <laughs> but then he goes, he goes, wait, all right, it's an Al Bed too. Is he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, the reason I like that so much. <laughs> is Aaron Al Bed too? I love it, dude. It is He's so like, wait, funny. Sir Aaron isn't an Al Bed too, is he? Now, this shows so clearly <laughs> that Waka doesn't yeah. have a single fetching clue what an Albed is. Right, he right. He doesn't know anything about Albed. Yes, which is it, so it, interesting. And this is where a lot of racism really is born from. It's born from ignorance. Pure right? ignorance. Total yeah. ignorance. A yeah, fear, yeah. because you don't know. And we talked about this last time, but yeah. because you don't know something, because of right. the part that's unclear to you, you fear it. Um, this is, I mean, this happens all the time. A recent example. Um, I was talking with uh, Christine over... Um, like an instant messenger sort of thing, a video messenger. And it was windy that mm. night, and something slammed against the window of her apartment. Oh. 
um, like the the sliding glass door to yeah. the balcony, and she was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, it's a someone's person. trying to get in. It's a vampire. And I was knocking. like, and I was like, "Let me in." No, it's yeah. windy, and something from your porch got blown into the window. Right. And she could not buy that right. as a, because oh, I I just 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 open it and look. Mm. I kept telling her, just open it and look. Just yeah. look, you'll see. Just look. It's not yeah. that. And she would like resisted, 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 and then she finally did it. And it was like, oh, why was I afraid? Right. If I had known yes. what it really was, I wouldn't that, have That's been almost afraid, the right? definition of fear, yes. is not knowing. Right? Just not knowing. Yeah, because like, why are you afraid of the dark? Well, because you don't know what's there. And yes. so it's not, it's like fear is like an emotion, but it's the, the literal fact is that you just don't know something. Yeah. And so that's all that's happening with Waka. And that's yeah. all that's happening with a lot of people who are ignorant. I, the question is, Aaron and Albed is the funniest <laughs> question. It might be the funniest moment in the yeah, whole game. Yeah, it's like Aaron it's doesn't so have blonde good. hair. He doesn't have green eyes. He certainly doesn't have the spiral formation in the yeah, eye, yeah, pupil. Yeah. So, but Waka doesn't yeah. know that those things are what makes an Albed an Albed. Right. That's how clueless he is yeah, as yeah. to like the culture of the Albed. And so I really like how... After that, like after like being suspicious of Arn for a second, um, Titus tries to be like, "Come on, Waka, you got along just fine before you knew Riku was an Albed. Like, can't you just, you know, be cool?" <laughs> and, he, and he's like, "That's different." And um, and and Titus says, "Well, I don't claim to know that much about Spira. I probably know even less about the Albed, but I know Riku's a good person. She's just Riku, right?" Right. And, and then you were fine with her before yeah. you knew she was Albed. And and so Waka then turns to Lulu, like, will you please support me in this? And I love how Lulu says, yeah. just think of this as an opportunity to learn more about the Albed. About, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Which is exactly what he needs to do. It's the whole yes. problem. He just doesn't know anything about well, it. And that's the idea, because you mentioned, oh, if you're afraid of what's out the window, go look, go find out yes. what it could be, and then you'll feel better, right? Yes. So the whole point is, yeah, learning, learning. Go learn what's outside your window. Go learn about this culture. Yes. And maybe you'll be better off. Yes. You know? But and at the very least, learning is like the point. Go do yes. that. Right. If you don't do anything else, do that. And he just walks off. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and we're all taking saying, the snowmobiles. Go, you know. and yeah, and he doesn't want to take. He's it. walking. He's not. He's, he'll walk instead of. It he's reminded a, me of he's, that. He's um, a. He's a waka. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good pun. That was pretty good. Um, <laughs> I could do better. I think I do better. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, it reminds me of that story during the production of Fellowship of the Ring where. Sean Bean was so afraid of helicopters, right? Oh, yeah, he climbed he the mountain himself. He climbed a fetching mountain yeah. rather than flying to the top of the rest of the cast. That's right. To avoid riding in the helicopter, yeah. which to me is just insane. That's crazy. That <laughs> is crazy. Insane. And they passed him. The helicopter went over, and he's down there. They got a picture of him waving. He like, climbed wow. Wow. literally a snow-capped mountain yeah. in his costume <laughs> with a sword and shield and stuff. <laughs> Because <laughs> he was so afraid of helicopters. That is it's wild. It's basically what Waka does. He walks there instead of riding on these Albed machines. Yep. Now, as you're riding, this is what I was alluding to earlier, um, where th this... As who, who you ride with? Who you ride with yeah. depends on the affection, the hidden affection system. I, this is my, I played the game twice. It's, it's Lulu every time. So it's easiest know. to get Lulu. Okay, I guess. Just like <laughs> it's easiest to get Aerith. Oh, in for Final Fantasy VII during the date scene. Um, Kate Sith, what you call that? The the the, the, the circus. The, um, circus. The circus. The casino. The, I know the gold um, saucer. Golden saucer. <laughs> there we go. The gold saucer. Um, yeah. So it's easiest to get Lulu, but you can have Riku. You could even be talking to Kamari during this part if you've done it right, or Aaron. They're on the other bikes. Yeah. But yeah. Um, either Riku or Lulu will ride on the back. I really you. like the conversation with Lulu though. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Um, she tries to get him to, she says, please don't be so mad at Waka, right? I love, when I she's love not that. around Waka, yes. she is so, and she's starting to trust us now, you know? Yeah. She's so, like, soft towards him. She really does, yeah. like, like him, you know? Yeah. She doesn't hate him, I'll put it that way. Yeah, and, and he's like, oh, I'm not. <laughs> so I really yeah, like no that. Big deal. It's like, Titus doesn't have grudges. as horribly racist as yeah. Waka has been, yeah. they don't condemn him for it yeah right yeah. they're trying to help him and i yeah. like that uh, we talked about that earlier so i won't yeah. reiterate but um uh she's asking him not to be too hard or too mad at him he's like oh i'm totally cool about it it's no problem and then he asks her what she thinks about riku and she's like oh she's fun she's fun to hang out with <laughs> yeah. hang out with. <laughs> and she's a good person or whatever yeah yeah and 
Titus says, you know what the problem is? She's just another Albed to Waka. Waka's head is as hard as a rock. Mm. I bet it's because of Yevon or, you know, something like that. <laughs> and she's like, well, there's more to it than that. Waka doesn't like the Albed because of Chapu. Because of his brother, yeah. Because Chapu was brought in to use Machina weapons, which are Albed weapons, right? Yes. And so that's what Tita says. Oh, he used a Machina weapon, right? And he got killed by Sin. Killed by my old man. He says, Yeah, oh, and she's like, what? And he yeah, goes, and he nothing. Jacked. And he's, she's like, wait, what the fetch did you say? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, it was the wind. It's like, hey. I nothing. didn't say anything. By the way, uh, can someone ever, like, a human become Sin? Yes. So, so this is for... Oh, I love he's it. He's trying to find out if they know anything in this world about a person being transformed into sin. Right. Is it even possible that Jekt is sin? Is like, how does that work? In the parameters of what the people of Spira believe in the Yevon's teachings. Yeah. And she says, I can't say I know, but why? And he's like, eh, just a thought. And then she goes on to say, sin is the punishment for and the incarnation of crimes we have committed. And so Tia says, so no one really knows what it is. And she says, there's no need to know, so no one asks. And this is there's the whole no need theme, to know. right? You run yeah. or you fight. That's really all you can do. There's no sense brooding over it. And I love, again, this is his whole role in the story. What? That's it? That's all? I mean, you don't even wonder? You don't ask? No one asks? No one ever asks? <laughs> and, and that's like kind of what Riku was saying to Waka just a second ago. Like, hmm. don't you ever think for yourself? Yes. You've been so indoctrinated. Yeah, yeah, to do yeah. That. All of them. So not if you don't want to get excommunicated. Yep. And then I love her response to that. You really do come from a world where, where there is no sin, like you said. She's like... Yeah, she's believing him. Because people from this world don't talk like that. No, not even close. So yeah, there's yeah. no way that you were born in the same religion as me if this yes. is how you're talking. Right? <laughs> so, anyways, really good scene. Um, I think we should probably Yeah, it's good there. stuff. Okay. Um, again, I'll, I'll put in a pinned comment where to play up to for next time. Uh, and we'll get to some more comments on the next uh, the next episode. We'll kind of dig into what you guys are saying because I think there's going to be a lot of stuff to cover now that we've gone through the far plane and Guadalupe Salam and yeah. a lot of world yeah. and world building stuff. So we'll probably a lot to respond to next time. But, um, in any case, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, we're about halfway through the story, roughly at this point. Yeah, yeah. This is episode. Nine, I think. So this is looking to be about a Xenogears like podcast at this point. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh well. <laughs> <Hopefully> <laughs> it is what it is. Here. We'll see you again next time. Peace out.